any time where there's a lot of disruption and change, you know, and we've had this, it's not just this time, we've had this in many times in human history with the internet, uh, mobile, but before that was the industrial revolution. Um, and it's going to be one of those eras where there will be a lot of change. I think there'll be new jobs we can't even imagine today, just like the internet created. And then those people with the right skill sets to ride that wave will become incredibly uh, valuable, right? Those skills. But maybe people will have to relearn or adapt a bit uh, their current skills. And it's the, the thing that's going to be harder to deal with this time around is that I think what we're going to see is something like probably 10 times the impact the industrial revolution had and but 10 times faster as well right so instead of 100 years it takes 10 years and so that's going to make it you know it's like 100x uh the impact and the speed combined so that's what's i think going to make it more difficult for society to 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 deal with and it's good there's a lot to think through and i think we need to be discussing that right now and i i you know encourage top economists in the world and philosophers to start thinking about um uh, how should is society going to be affected by this and what should we do including things like um you, you know uh, universal basic provision or something like that where a lot of the um increased productivity uh gets shared out and distributed uh to society um and maybe in the form of surface services and other things where if you want more than that you still go and get some incredibly rare skills and things like that um and and make yourself unique um but uh, uh but there's a basic provision that is provided and if you think of government as a technology there's also interesting questions not just in the economics but just politics how do you design a system that's responding to the rapidly changing times such that you can represent the different pain that people feel from the different groups and how do you reallocate resources in a way that uh, addresses that pain and represents the hope and the pain and the fears of different people uh, in a way that doesn't lead to division because politicians are often really good at sort of fueling the division and using that to get elected, the other, defining the other and then saying, yeah. That's bad, and sort of based on that, I think that's often counterproductive to leveraging a rapidly changing technology how to help the world flourish. So we almost uh, need to improve our political systems as well rapidly if you think of them as a technology definitely and i think i think we'll need new governance uh, structures institutions probably to help with this transition so i think political philosophy and political science is going to be key uh to that but i think the number one thing first of all uh, is to create more abundance of resources right mm -hmm. then there's the so that's the number one thing increase productivity get more resources maybe eventually get out of the zero sum situation then the second question is how to use uh, those resources and distribute those resources but yeah you can't do that without having that abundance first